You like the way that sounded? Well, I'm going to teach it to you right now. We're going to work on some hand independence using a Latin bossa nova rhythm. Hi gang, Scott Houston here again. You know what I'm going to do today is to teach you not only what a bossa rhythm is, but more importantly, the bigger picture of why I'm using that as an example is I want to dig into something else I can try to help you to get hand independence. It's the old rub your head, pat your tummy issue, which everyone has problems with. And so don't feel funny if you, you have issues with that. It is by far the main issue that people have playing in the styles that I teach. Everyone always thinks, oh, I'm never going to remember the chords, or I don't have the dexterity, and it's not that. It, oh, I can't read enough. It's not that. I always laugh when people say, what's the hardest thing about your class? And I always say, you know, it's all the things you think are going to stump you won't. What probably will stump you, and it's not a stumper, what's just going to slow you down is hand independence. So let's dig into this. Uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, you know, use this example of a bossa nova, this, this kind of pattern, it's this feel, this... I'm not showing you this on purpose, but... Right? Well, that sounds so interesting rhythmically because it's not going like this. You know, or whatever, you know. It's this interest, it's this kind of counterpoint between one hand and the other. Well... That's the hard part, right? That's the rub your head, pat your tummy stuff. So how do you learn to do that? And, oh, you know, I just can't, I, I just can't get myself to do it. What you do is you slow down. <laughs> and I mean you really slow down whatever it is you want to play until it quits being this hard-to-do hand thing and it becomes as simple. Okay, we're going to do one of these. We're going to play one together. And then there's going to be two of this one and one of these together. And whatever that pattern is, there is some repeatable pattern you can... If you slow it down, get it to a point where you can identify the pattern, and that's when your brain locks in. That's when your brain says, ah, got it, two lefts, one together, one right, one left, one together, or, you know, whatever the pattern is. That's what you got to do. So let's dig in and figure it out for this one. Okay, so, you know, in tempo, this boss of pattern sounds like this. Here's what they are separately. This is a bass player in my left hand going. Right. Just playing a typical bass one to five thing. One, five, five, one, one. Talking about scale steps there, sorry. All the rest of you are thinking, sounds like the beginning to Ricky don't lose that number to me. Right. So that would be the equivalent of a bass player sitting back going. Doom, 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 doom. Right? So that's that. And then the right hand is playing this, it's, it's called a clave pattern, right? So when you, sorry, I kick back here. It's when you see the claves going like three, four. Mm. Right? It's that pattern. So that's it. So I'm just playing a chord, but I'm using that rhythmic pattern of a clave pattern. So, you know, if I, if I was snapping my fingers or I'll just play it like a metronome. Here's the pattern. Okay. So now we got to put it together. Right? It's not that hard. Here we go. So we're going to go like this. is trying to slow down like yeah that didn't do it that wasn't slow enough for me yet i got slowed down even further to try to figure out what the 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 pattern is so we're going to go one of these together okay so we got two together we got the first one and the second one that are together so we got okay so we got first one together second one together then one by yourself in your left hand so we got I'll just sit and do this for a minute. Okay, I got that part down. So we're going to play together on the first two, the first, and it's not even beats, it's just the first two things you're physically having to play. Because your brain is trying to map out what's, what's in what order, right? So we're going to go this one. So we've got the 
first two together and then one left by itself. So it... and then there's a right by itself. All right, so here we are. Aha! Slowly but surely, we're tearing this down. Let's try that again. So we have together, together, then one by itself down here, then a right, then two left. So we have. So let's do that one just a few times. Here we go. over. Okay, I'm really letting my brain right alone, two lefts. Okay, so you know, this might take you, what I'm spending 10, 15 seconds doing as an example, it may take you two or three minutes to sit and do that a few times to really get comfy doing that. So let's keep moving forward. So we're here. So now we got another right by itself. So starting over, we have. Oh, that's we're almost to the end of it, but here we go. So we go. Right alone, then the two lefts alone, and then another right alone right after it. So we have. That starts back to the beginning. So that's it. We've gotten to the end of it. So really slowly, it's like this. See what I mean? If you just go really slow, it's an interesting thing when you're working on hand independence things, and drummers really can connect the dots with this, because it's a lot like that when you're trying to work out some new pattern in all four of your limbs. You normally just can't play it at all. It's not as though it's something that you slowly get better at. It's something that you can't do, you can't do, you can't do, you can't do, and then all at once you kind of break through the wall, and you can do it. So it, it, when you learn how to do things like this, this is one case where you don't normally have this gradual increase. You do, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it, can do it. Okay, can't do this next thing, can't do next thing, next thing, can do it. And then it's just, it's all of a sudden, it's like you, your brain breaks through the wall, and then you can walk on and do it until the next wall comes up. It's not this, this climbing up a hill thing, okay? So, to, just to make one last little comment so it doesn't get quite so monotonous, if you want to, you can play up a, a chord, you know, move up a half step to, that's what I was doing at the beginning, just to make it sound interesting. This is kind of what you do, like at the beginning of, I, I actually play that a lot at the very beginning of Girl from Ipanema, but something like this, so we got... <laughs> Sorry, so busy thinking about it, I can't play it. I just lifted everything up, I went from here to there. And I'm just going to play one pattern up higher and then go back down. You know, and on and on and on. So, you know, that stuff sounds pretty cool. It's a really professional sound. Well, it is a professional sound. It's what you would play if you were playing a bossa nova. But again, the real reason I wanted to spend the time doing this, and I know this probably got a little monotonous because it was just this one thing, but the big issue for you on this video is understanding that the way you break through the wall when you're having a hand independence issue and you can't get the, the rhythms and things down right is you just you slow it down. And not just kind of slow. I mean, you get down to the... Okay, one of these, two of these, two of this one, then that one, then this one, then that one. And, and it's the only way your brain can kind of cement what order everything has to come in. And then once it does, it's, you, know, you don't have to keep walking. You can start jogging pretty easily because your brain knows what order everything has to come in. And so 
that's the, uh, you know, Scott the Piano Guy's theory on, on working through hand independent stuff. And I just get that question like crazy. And I, I sometimes feel like I'm beating a dead horse saying slow down, but I don't think ever anyone ever really slows down far enough. Get it down to where you're intentionally not even making music and you're just trying to get your, your noggin to connect the dots with what order each hand has to come down. Hopefully that'll sink in. Hopefully that's a breakthrough. I hope so. And if not, don't let this scare you away. As always, keep having fun playing piano. It's the only way you'll stick with it. See you next time.